one of them days. Just gotta make do with the best you can when you're out. You know, with my luck, I'm gonna be reincarnated as a mullet. <laughs> Not only do you get attacked from the ocean, you get attacked from people casting cast nets, birds. At least your lifespan wouldn't be too long. Ah, a... <laughs> nice going. Another greenback. <laughs> Caught you by surprise, didn't he? Yeah, he did. This little four pound test on here catching these things. These things can be just a blast. Just gotta watch out for these guys. They're a little messy. Yeah, point them out towards the water there, Blair. Uh, lady fish. Uh, get out. They're wild. Like cross between a mullet and a tarpon is what they look like. If you'd have stayed still long enough, I'd have showed him to you. That's right, I'll get you another one. These ladyfish are, there he is, right there. These things are a blast. Oh, this one's got a little size to him, maybe. Shoot. Never fails, you always get big fish. You got a real light line, not fishing for big fish. It ain't acting like no ladyfish. It's a sail cat. Sail cat. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many different variety of species out here. Just get out and plug around. Man, that's not a bad sail cat at all. So as a kid, we'd be out using topwater plugs and stuff on the flats, and we'd get one of these big sail cats that come up and knock a topwater plug, and you think you have the biggest trout in the world on it, it ends up being a sail cat. You can always tell, too, if they pop off, you'd get a good shot of that line. It's like saying you've been slimed. These things are some slimy critters, but we're gonna let this guy go. <sighs> now the reason they call them gaff top, kind of obvious. Look at the size of the top dorsal fin on this thing and the pectoral fins. They just use those and glide across the bottom and eat everything in their path. They're definitely a vicious catfish. I'm all slimed. There he is. But caught him on a DOA terrorize. He loved it. Sorry, Mom, got to let this one go. <laughs> They're a blast. Mogan time. Oh, they are munching. They are munching. Okay, well, we got them right up here. They're tailing. We found a school of red. Still got a gray day out, but it's the sun's popping out every once in a while and it's bringing these fish up to the top. We're trying to be real quiet as we can to get up on them because they're, they're real sensitive right now. I don't know if they're not tailing too good, but they're right right out here about 100 yards. They're all big fish. Yeah, they might have turned turned around and uh, coming right back towards us. Looks like they're moving to the right right there, Tony. I'd say there's probably 500 fish in this school, all between 20 and 35 pounds. We're gonna try the top water on them first. I do have two other rods here laid out with two other different baits on that they might, you know, if they don't hit this top water plug, we got two extra plugs right here that we can throw. Look at that. There's tails right there, brother. Right off the bow of the boat. Man, these finors cast a long way. Whack him up, buddy. You see that fish come out of the water after that? He attacked that good old money. Yes. Man. Was that awesome Woo. or what? Do I got the shakes? If you can't get the shakes doing this, brother, I don't know. There's something wrong. Oh, man. He oh, come man. out of the water you... about a foot and a half, didn't he? Was that an awesome hit or what? Did you see that's about a 30-pound redfish? Came out of the water and jumped on that thing. 
It just don't get no better than that. One thing that makes the Indian River lagoon system in here so unique is we don't have any tidal flow in here. And these big fish stay in here year round. As long as the bait's in here plentiful, these fish are in here. And uh, being as there's no tidal flow, these fish just stay in here all year and they eat when they're hungry. Like we, we were out at dawn this morning looking for them and they just weren't up. There's not really anything that triggers a, uh, triggers a bite like down a flamingo in that area. Um, uh, the tide triggers the bite. Tony, how about jumping down and get this guy? All right. Now I'm coming down. I'm All right. The boat. That is a mug in there, brother. And he jumped all over that top dog. He's got him look like, like a kingfish coming after it, huh? Nice fish, nice fish. It's that tail, watch him hooks. I got, I got the tail. <laughs> you gonna be able to lift him out of there? No, I don't know. Some slack. Here. Let me grab that tail. God! <laughs> <laughs> it goes underneath the boat. Let me try. Not good, not good. Let me get that mouth. Watch him teeth. All right, here we go. Got him? And the boat. All right. Now that is addictive right there. That is a hoss. Watch, watch fingers. Got it. Completely unhurt. You ready, brother? <sighs> now that's what a real redfish looks like there. <laughs> yeah, boy. God, Ten, that's a beautiful yeah. fish. 10 pound test. Not bad. Look at the spots. Two spots in the back. Two feet of water. Let's see how many spots on that side. One big spot on that. That's about a 30 pound redfish right there. I mean, I'm still shaking. <laughs> yeah! Love it! Uh. Man, what a fish. Since Florida did about the smartest thing in the world that uh, could ever be done, they banned the nets here about three years ago. And these redfish here have just, the population of them has exploded. The school we're fishing's got about anywhere from 500 to 1,500 fish in it a lot of the times. And uh, I can't say enough good things about the FCA and how they put that net band together. It was one of the most awesome things they ever did. Keeping these fish around, I'm gonna let her go. And that is Mogan Redfish. Thank you, Tony. Not a problem, man. I Thank you. It. Tony and Sodas. We'll throw his number up a little later. He can put you on his redfish and take you fishing. Oh, yeah. He gets you. Gets you real addicted to this. Gets the shakes. <laughs> but I think I'm going to be able to whack one of these for you. Again. Kind of scary. All right, looks like they're gonna do a good pass over it right now. And it switched to live bait. Hey, he's got it. Got it. Ah, buddy! <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Live bait. He didn't have to bite this one in half, though. <laughs> oh, they can be pain sometimes. Oh, one thing that's been making these fish a little more spooky up here is the DEP has got a uh, tagging and uh, the breeding program going on. And what they're doing, they come up here and net these big fish, and get all the eggs and the, get all the row out of them. They take them back down somewhere down south in Miami or near Miami, and I think another one in Fort Walton or I'm not Fort Walton but Fort Myers, and they. Uh, they breed them. They've released like three million redfish here in the Indian River Lagoon system. None of these, none of these guys here. What they've released, though, all these here have been here. These are the big brood stock fish. Big bruisers. Only got a 10-pound test on here. Yeah, that's a. Oh God, that's a big fish. That is a big one. 
like a big pink manatee out there. Don't worry folks though, it ain't a manatee. It's all rod bending, drag screaming television, man. Look at that fish. God almighty. That's one of the big boys. I think we got a grown one. Oh, that's a Mogan. Max amount of pressure. Got nothing you can do there, just let him go. Until he turns around and starts giving you a side direction, then you know which way to pull on him. Rod bending. Drag wasn't screaming all that much, but there he goes. You know, I gotta come up with an alarm clock that sounds like this. Tony said once before, if we had an alarm clock that sounded like this, we'd get up every single morning and never be late. <laughs> that side pressure, he's going to the right now. So I'm holding way down to the left. Get these fish whipped oh, real quick with this side pressure. Uh, you're gonna come under my boat. I was gonna jump there for a second. <laughs> like that first one. Come on, baby. Yeah, you wanna grab him? Yeah, he ain't all that long, but he looks like he swallowed a bowling ball. I don't see you there, bud. I ain't got my hand on her. Both hands and... Listen to that thing drum. <sighs> Look at that. What a beauty. God, is that a pretty fish or not? Ooh. Oh, Hank Brown does it again, doesn't he? Yep. Get this sucker up. Ugh. Another quality fish. <sighs> Can I kiss Ooh. that one this time? Go ahead, give it a big old French kiss. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. Huh? Well, you got that one. Yeah. I had one on, but it just, just didn't happen. Better again. Let's that thing drum. Look, at, she's got what, five, six spots, what, five spots on that, six spots on that side, and five on the other? Yeah, you know when they're little fingerling fish, these spots, well, they usually only have like one spot, and that kind of looks, it looks like an eye to predator fish. And when the predator fish comes up and sees these when they're little, uh, just little fingerlings, they'll go and try to, hit, they try to eat it head first, and with the, with the spot back there on the tail, that looks like an eye. So they actually will will try to bite at the tail and it gives the fish a little bit more survival rate. But that's how it's done on the Indian River. You'll get a chance to do this. Do it. Catch our show on the World Wide Web. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere on the planet at addictivefishing.com. That's a redfish there, brother. Let me look down. We talked about their crushers a little bit. And if you can see down in his throat there, way down in his back of his throat, they use those to crush crush uh, crabs, clams, big shrimp. They just crush them to a pulp and suck them down. Man, that is a beauty. That's pretty fish. Thank you, baby. Uh, Now this fish here is probably uh, 25 years old. Once they hit about 15 pounds, uh, their growth, growth rate starts slowing down quite a bit and they hit about 20 pounds. And uh, they do about a pound a year after that. Once they hit about 20 years, there's about 20 pounds. That's what a biologist told me, so. That's my quote there. I'll lift him up one more time, show this big bad boy to you. 
Yeah, baby. <laughs> ah. I'm gonna put her on her way, Tony. And you're gonna be able to put somebody else on these. I wanna show you a little bit what we used here today. We started out using the DOA Terra uh, bait buster here. That's what we were catching a little, all the uh, ladyfish and like the Jack Corvell on. Uh, when it was a real nasty day. We got on the redfish, started tossing these on them, and they hit them a couple times, but they got used to seeing them and figured out it wasn't real, I guess. So then we moved to the top water plugs, and you saw the crashes on these things. That rattle just drove them nuts, and they jumped up and ate it. Uh, then <laughs> we tried throwing a little shrimp on them. Got a couple little bumps on these, but they really didn't want it. Then we went to the ultimate, the live bait. Hey, you can't be denied on live bait. All we did was hook them right in between the eyes, doesn't matter if they're alive or dead. Use a little Hank Brown jig head here, toss them out in front of the school, bump it a couple times or leave it sit right on the bottom and they swallowed it up. That's basically all we did today. Satisfied our addiction, now we're ready to go home. Let's see if he'll, he'll smile for the camera for us. Let's see what a real smoke looks like here, a Mogan. <laughs> Line cider in the Everglades.